Hi everyone! Our last update from this technology integration challenge. For this expedition, each team came with its own list of things that needed to be checked out, validated, or improved on each robot and Nautilus itself as we integrated our systems to operate together. And it all came together during our last couple of dives, where we successfully demonstrated a full stack of three vehicles exploring different dynamics of the ocean, all at the same time, with Nautilus operating nearby. This is a new paradigm for at-sea operations. Here are a few updates from those last few missions. Hi everybody, this is Larry here from the Drix team. Our vehicle was launched first for both of these operations, demonstrating a few key elements that enabled all the vehicles to work together. First, mapping. At its core, Drix is a specialized vehicle for fast, efficient, and high quality mapping. What you can see here is an example of a Drix produced map. The Konsberg EM2040 provides us excellent resolution in shallow areas like our site east of Lanai. Another key feature of Drix is the marine broadband radio, which is a long distance communication link. From distances up to 20 kilometers, we're able to relay information back to the ship in real time. This radio leak was the foundation for multi-vehicle ops, and we could not have confidently reached our goal without it. Another benefit of the radio link is that it allowed the ship to move away from Drix and carry out its own independent mapping operation. This greatly extended the area we could cover and revealed an interesting target that we decided was worthy of exploration with all three vehicles, a lonely pinnacle that shut up more than 75 meters from the flat surrounding seafloor. Dana here with Team Mezabot. Using this map, we were able to plan a mission to explore the midwater above and around this feature. Throughout this cruise, we've gotten pretty good at our core missions of deploying Mezabot to follow isolooms or sample eDNA within a layer. But those successes were on solo drives with Nautilus. For these final dives, we were keen to demonstrate our ability to communicate and adjust a mission through Drix well away from the ship as we interrogated its sensors in real time. So we launched Mezabot shortly after Drix and commanded it to drive to a feature identified by Drix, which was circling above. That's what you're seeing in this incredible recording of our dive. See Drix circling around Mezabot? Imagine it's operating like an aircraft control center, circling above Mezabot and maintaining its acoustic communication and revealing the layers below. Our first step was to test this link and using Drix's EK-80, actually monitor where the layers of animal life were located. So Mezabot could investigate by taking images and measuring the light levels. And look at that, see the little red streak? That's actually Mezabot showing up on Drix's sonar. With Drix still supporting from the surface, we started sampling and even interactively driving Mezabot to different areas of interest as they appeared. A capability that's a bit of a home run for all of us. We can now redirect Mezabot in real time from miles away through this acoustic link to features revealed by Drix. Hey everyone, Roland here from UNH's ASV group and part of Team Drix. Let's talk about that acoustic link for a second. These vehicles communicate with tiny text messages, about the size of a text message on your phone, little SMS messages that flow back and forth between acoustic modems. Here's what it looks like. Now, a real challenge is when there's multiple vehicles in the water and each is trying to communicate over different protocols, in effect, different languages. It's even more complicated when they're all talking at the same time. Imagine a group chat between Nautilus and these robots on your phone. Mezabot's designed to constantly text its position and status into its surroundings. It can also acknowledge when a message gets received, but no more. That's by design but can get a bit spammy. Another challenge is that Mezabot needs to remain close enough to an acoustic modem to send and receive good text messages. That's where Drix steps in with its long range data link, sensors, and its ability to follow Mezabot closely. With a good acoustic link and data flowing from sensors to ship, we were able to not only monitor positions, but even drive Mezabot using real time data. The software architecture proved its flexibility when we were tasked with adding a fourth vehicle to the mix. As Nereid Under Ice also started using its acoustic modem, we were able to transmit their messages in a similar manner and display all four vehicle positions on the same unified map. Our software was the glue that allowed us to coordinate operations throughout the dives as the mission progressed.
And yes, folks, this is Molly with Nereid Under Ice. For this mission, we knew exactly where we were and what the seabed looked like thanks to Drix's beautiful map. As we reached the pinnacle, Mezabot was sampling above and Drix was circling on the surface. Our light fiber tether enabled this unique mission profile as Nautilus was able to keep clear of Drix on the surface while we operated as an ROV directly under the other vehicles that were deployed, using our cameras and sensors to explore the seafloor. And having this tether was additionally valuable to develop our own acoustic communications protocols to work through Drix, a key capability we wanted to demonstrate as part of this multi-vehicle jamboree as we shifted to exploring in autonomous mode. Through Drix, we continued our exploration mission using Nui's co-exploration protocols. Co-exploration, or coex, allows the users to select what information they think is most valuable and prioritize those features over a low bandwidth connection. It shows how onboard autonomy and data processing can provide actionable summaries of high resolution data that is otherwise only available post-processing. Hey folks, Jason here. I'll wrap up by saying how important it is to be prepared. During this last dive, we had Mizobot unexpectedly come to the surface, an event that normally might end an entire mission. However, because our teams are prepared with multiple modes of operations, we were able to continue exploring while the team started diagnosing the problem. As Nautilus moved to recover Mizobot, Nui seamlessly switched to AUV mode using its acoustic modems link with Drix to keep exploring. How awesome is that? This is a great example of our goal to test the best ways to integrate these different technologies that are great on their own, but so much more powerful working together. 